everybody. So, doing a new series called Watercolor ABCs. So, starting off with A. Um, so, in watercolor, there's a couple different things that start with A. Um, the one I'm going to focus on today is called Atmospheric Perspective. And that's basically creating the illusion of depth, showing things that are farther away. And the way that we do that, you can kind of see on this one, the way that we do that is things that are farther away are lighter in color. So let's get started here. So if I wanted to create a mountainscape and I want to show that things in the background are farther away, I'm going to make them lighter. So I'm gonna start, let's see, let me use, this is, um, Arches paper. What I did is I took it, uh, this was a 9 by 12 and I chopped it in half and then I took it to Staples and they bound it for me for about $4. Um, so it kind of made my own sketchbook because I like Arches paper and uh, sometimes I don't like using a full sheet when I'm sketching things out. So the background, let's see, let's see my palette here. I'm just mixing up a super light turquoisey color for my background, for my sky. It's one of those palette cleaning days where I like mix everything together and just see what I can make and use it up. Okay, so I think I'm gonna add a touch more blue to that. It's looking too green. I'm just adding the color indigo. There's a little bit of turquoise in here okay so because I'm going to be covering the entire background I'm going to use a larger brush so this is a angle shader but I'm just going to use it to kind of wash the whole background because I don't have a specific wash brush it's a three-quarter inch Princeton snap okay grab my color Need more water. I'm just going to kind of like drop in darker amounts through here. So I kind of got like a misty gray background. I do want to put some clouds in there, so I'm just taking some paper towel, squishing it in various oof, different little um, shapes. Shapes, that's the word I was looking for right there. And so this will kind of help create like the illusion like, oh, there's clouds back in the sky. Okay. And so now before I can move on, this has got to dry. All right, we're back. And yeah, we should be dry. A little trick to tell if your paper is still wet is if you touch it and it's cold, it's wet, even if it doesn't look it. All right, so I'm going to be doing mountains. I think I might actually keep with this angled brush, but I'm going to mix up my color. I think in my mountains, I'm going to go for some Payne's Gray. So I want to make it a little darker than my sky, but these, I'm going to make it a super light color by adding more water so that I'm gonna do the mountains in the background first because they are gonna be lightest in color. Okay. Get some water on my brush. Soak up some color. Okay, 
So I'm going to take kind of like this little thing I got going there. So I'm going to So I got my main line down, and I'm just going to blend it down. Adding more water, moving it down. Just blending. Not too worried about the bottom right now because that is going to get covered up by another line of mountains anyway. Okay, so this is my mountain farthest in the back. It's my lightest color. I'm going to go in, I think. Just some variants dabbling in a little bit of the darker color. Just being very careful not to add... Oops, that's too dark, I think. I don't want to add too much color. But I also want to... very the depth in these mountains here. There we go. And watercolors dry lighter than when you first put them down. So even though this is starting to look a little dark when it dries, it will actually be much lighter. Okay. And now we dry. All right. Time for my next layer. I realized uh, <laughs> when I was drying this that I forgot to plug in my mic when I was doing that first layer of mountains. So I might have to dub over that one. We'll see. Okay, so I'm just mixing up a slightly darker Payne's Gray. A little bit more. I like it all flowy. There we go. So I'm going to do another range of mountains, and these are going to be slightly darker because they are a bit closer to me. So I was doing some research on like how to explain atmospheric pressure, or perspective, sorry. I'm also a teacher, and we have to teach atmospheric pressure. Anyway, um, so it's just saying that things are lighter in color the farther they are away because there's so much like atmosphere in the way from our viewing line uh, yeah i think uh, wikipedia explained it better than i did okay. so i'm not being afraid to like come up higher than those other mountains because it's still going to communicate that these are closer because they are darker I am trying to kind of vary heights. I almost kind of don't like how this is going up and down, up and down. So I'm going to grab some more color. Yeah, I like that better. Yeah. Okay. Again, just kind of dabbing in different areas of my slightly darker color. There we go. Now we try. All right. In the home stretch, people. Oh. Ooh, I almost forgot to plug myself in again. Here, little fella. There we go. Okay, we're plugged in. All right. As I was saying, we're in the home stretch. Okay. Making another darker shade. My paint's gray. 
just a little darker than the last one. So this mountain, I'm actually going to kind of have it come down lower. It's always good to start off lighter. Like I'm noticing like this might not be dark enough, but it's better for it to be a little too light than a little too dark. So I can always add. This side keeps creeping up on me because <laughs> I keep messing with it. All right. So I made these a little less round there. Um, okay, so from here, you could be done. I mean, we clearly have mountains at different distances. I think I'm actually going to dry this one more time and then add a couple things to my foreground closest to me that will be the darkest. All right, so I'm not sure what happened to my audio for this part, so we're just going to roll with it. So I'm at the very last stage. I'm going to be using this fan brush to help me create the foreground, which is just going to be like another hill, a little bit of grass, a couple trees. So I'm going to start by getting the darkest shade of my color that I can. Again, this was Payne's Gray. I just keep adding until I get super thick, really, really, really dark. And then I can start laying down that color and I'll use my brush to kind of make the foliage in the foreground. <laughs> foliage foreground. Okay. So, oh, here, I'm just kind of explaining that I'm using a crappy kind of brush to mix my colors not one that's like so cheap that all the bristles fall out this one I got in a pack from Amazon and even though it was super cheap I think it was like 12 of them for ten dollars um, when I would mix my colors the bristles don't fall out so it's still really it's held up for about a year now I haven't had any issues with it and I'll see if I can remember to find it on my Amazon orders and link it below. Okay, so going in with my brush, putting down the foreground area, just kind of making a ground area. Most grounds aren't totally flat. So just adding that in, dragging that color along as I go. All right, there we go. Kind of little lumps and bumps. Kind of raising it on one side so it doesn't look totally flat. All right. So now the fun thing with the fan brush is like the bristles are super stiff so I can put it in the wet paint and flick it up and instant grass. Super quick, super easy. So now I'm taking my detail brush and I'm going to go in and start making some trees. I start by putting in the trunk and then just little dabs of paint kind of going back and forth. Sometimes I do all the way across a tree. Sometimes I do one side and then the other. Just trying to make sure that I start off with the top super thin and then the bottom just gets wider and wider. Keeping a triangular shape without making it a total triangle. All right, so I don't want to fill up the area completely with trees, so I'm going to add in just three or so, just enough to kind of um, 
give the foreground some depth without having an overabundance of trees. So my focus for this piece was just the mountains and varying the shades. But I want to make sure that I do have enough of a foreground to kind of show that perspective. So here, this one's looking a little too triangu triangular. So I'm just adding in some like wonky branches because in nature, trees are not perfect. Trees are wonky and that's okay. All right, and then I'm gonna add in one more tree on this side, maybe one a little taller. Again, just doing little dabs or dashes, however you want to do it. I just kind of change the position of my brush, move back and forth, picking up more color as I need. I, with the smaller brushes, you have to kind of reload them with more paint more frequently. So it looks like we are just about finished. Add a few more little touches, darkening up some areas, doing a couple wonky branches. And there we have it, folks. So we're communicating that atmospheric perspective by making sure things in the background are lighter and then they gradually get darker as they come forward. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.